Hi kids, it's Mrs. Fravel. How are you? Really? Good. Okay, me too. I'm fine. Hey, today we're going to talk about uh, coral reefs. We're going to start unit three of marine biology and oceanography. We're going to dive into, huh? See what I did there? Dive into a coral reef, right? Now, if we were in class, I would be taking you um, on a tour of a coral reef via virtual reality. This is as close as I can get online. But uh, anytime you would like to actually explore a coral reef, Google uh, Earth will take you there. So all you have to do is Google the words Google Earth coral reefs and you can go underwater um, via Google's street view and it's just like the maps that you can you know see what's going on in people's streets they they've done that underwater now so this is a 360 degree underwater view of uh, the Great Barrier Reef at Queensland Island and um, the Great Barrier Reef is the largest uh, coral reef system on the planet it's actually the largest um, the largest object built by a living organism on the planet. It's visible from outer space and it was built by tiny animals called corals. And next week, uh, when we get back from fall break, I'll be talking about those animals' biology in particular. But right now, all I want to do is take you on a little tour, as much as I can, of an actual reef. Um, so this is a coral reef structure. The um, structure that you see in front of you that looks like rock is rock but is also not rock. Uh, coral reefs are constructed from the um, skeletons of corals. Corals build calcium carbonate skeletons that over time, as corals live and grow and die and more corals grow on top of them, their skeleton gets left behind when their soft body degrades and that um, those skeletons over time get compressed together and eventually become um, a substance we call limestone. And it is exceedingly common. Corals have been around for um, hundreds of millions of years and they've been building that whole time through all kinds of climate change events over time, through all kinds of extinction events. Coral reefs have been a constant in our shallow seas and also now we've discovered in our deep oceans. This unit we're just going to talk about shallow water tropical coral reefs. Okay? So as you dive around in here, take a look at what you're looking at. What do you think you're seeing? Um, see if you can point out come up with any animals that you see in this reef because I'm seeing hundreds of animals right now. This right here, that's an animal. Uh, these are animals. Those blue things, those are animals. Look, there is a butterfly fish way over there in the distance. Let's see. Let's go zoom in on. Ooh. What else am I seeing? <clears throat> If you've ever been lucky enough to scuba dive or snorkel in a coral reef, it is an unforgettable experience. They're a whole other world. And these organisms that build these are amazingly simple, yet the most resilient and also the most fragile organisms on our planet. And we're going to talk about both their strength and their resiliency. Okay, let's look around. Oh, there's a... I think that's a parrotfish. So cute. Parrotfish munch on coral. They eat coral. Uh, parrotfish make sand. So if you've ever been on a tropical beach, you sat on the, the beach that was made of parrotfish poop. Okay. Um, again, you can see all of these. There's a yellow tang, another butterfly fish. I'm hoping maybe... Well, what are those guys? Oh, I don't know what those are. I should know what those are, but I don't. Okay. This right here, this big structure, that is a brain coral, living brain coral. And that has to do with the structure. Their names have to do with their shape and morphology. And we'll talk about that again next week. Okay, let's just cruise around a little bit more. Anybody else? Ooh, needlefish, coronet fish. Let's see if I can get closer to those guys. Not really. Okay. 
So this is the world that we're going to study for the next two weeks. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'm going to pause this. I'll be right back and we'll talk a little bit more about what we are looking at. Look at those corals, man. You guys, look how pretty. I'm going to pause this now. And when I come back, we're going to talk about the abiotic factors in a coral reef. Okay. So hold tight one moment. Okay. I'm back. I got dried off from our dive. And I'm back. Okay, so we're going to talk about coral reefs. Again, here's a picture of some of the amazing biodiversity in it. And again, what you want to keep in mind if you, as you're looking at coral reefs, you are looking at biotic living organisms for the most part. Um, they don't look like they're alive or they look like plants, but these are all animals and uh, some algae as well, which is a plant, uh, but for the most part, coral reefs are built from animal skeletons, okay? All right, uh, if we were in class, I would have been doing that virtually. Just a couple of more facts for you. Uh, most established coral reefs, the ones that are extant or alive right now on our planet, have been there for uh, five to 10, thousand years that's how old these reefs are and again the corals build upon each other um, they they compete for space they have little battles with each other corals have stinging cells on them um, and they they aren't afraid to use them they do actually have little coral fights and they kill each other and grow over each other and it's it results in these these structures that can be hundreds of feet thick, okay? Um, and also uh, the geological record indicates that modern coral reefs, their ancestors have been around on the planet for at least 240 million years. And in that time, the earth has been through five to six major extinction events. And um, the continents have moved, the oceans have shifted, uh, the climate has changed many times on the planet in that time, and we see coral reefs changing over time, um, and on land, we now see fossil coral reefs. Again, we call them limestone, and we use them um, in a lot of our buildings. In fact, uh, a lot of, some of the buildings that um, are in downtown Salt Lake City are from some limestone, okay? Um, okay, so uh, this video, I'm going to link it underneath my video so that you can go watch it. Uh, it is on your worksheet assignment to take notes from it and answer these two specific questions, but I wanna see more notes. So make sure you go watch that after you watch my video. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the abiotic factors in a coral reef, okay? So coral reefs uh, function uh, like any ecosystem within certain parameters abiotically. So for their depth, tropical coral reefs do best in depths shallower than 27 meters. That's about 90 feet. That has to do with their light requirements. Corals require a moderate amount of life to survive. That's because they live with a symbiotic algae inside of their body tissues. And um, we'll talk more about these guys next week when we talk about um, what is a coral as an animal? Okay? Uh, those little algae are called zooxanthellae, and they are what give the coral their color. They are also what feed the coral, and they are algae that photosynthesize. So they have to have a certain amount of light. Not enough light. If it's too deep or the water has too much turbidity, which I'll talk about in a sec, they can't photosynthesize and the corals and the algae themselves, algae, algae will starve. Um, so they have to have that certain amount of light. But if it's too bright, if the water level drops and the coral is exposed to too bright or too hot of sunlight, um, that can cause the corals to 
bleach. And what they do is those those zooxanthellae um, algae, they can start to actually produce toxins instead of sugars, and they will poison the coral body. So if they get too hot, the corals will actually spit out their zooxanthellae. If it's too bright, if it's too hot, they'll spit out their zooxanthellae. They have a couple of other defenses that we've recently discovered. We, I say we, like like I'm doing that marine biologists have discovered and that I nerd out about. Um, that, that, but they're, for the most part, these guys are, uh, they are subject to the changes in their abiotic environment because they can't really go anywhere else, right? Okay. These guys are also picky about water temperature, coral reefs, Tropical corals thrive um, between temperatures of 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 21 to 29 Celsius. And I want you to keep that higher number, 85 degrees. I want you to remember that number. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna come up again. So keep keep remembering 85 degrees is as hot as corals can get safely before they start to die. They like a certain salinity. We talked about in the oceanography unit about uh, the average salinity levels of the ocean. These guys hit right about um, between 23 and 42. And that that depends on the species of coral and what part of the world that, that they're found in. We talked about the average ocean salinity is 35 parts per thousand. That's the average. It, it varies, right? We looked at the map. We looked at the the halocline levels um, throughout the world. So uh, the salinity matters depending on where the corals are from. Um, and if the salinity starts to change or if it starts to fluctuate too much due to either high evaporation due to warm weather or high amounts of freshwater runoff from the land um, lowering the salinity they don't like that they they don't tolerate that very well okay so they need between 23 to 42 and each specific coral reef has a, a smaller than that salinity range okay um, turbidity there's that word i used in the last slide this is the measure of clarity of water how clear it is and clarity is generally a measure of suspended particles in the water sand algae plankton um, grit clay runoff pollutants those can all lower the turbidity I'm sorry, lower the clarity of the water, increase the turbidity. Okay? Corals need that clear water so that they can get the right amount of sunshine for their zooxanthellae to photosynthesize. Okay? Um, with that turbidity, those, those sediments, those particles that are floating, they'll eventually probably start to settle out, especially if the water is still. When they settle out, they settle on top of the corals. Corals have some ability to um, shed sediments on top of them. They can kind of inflate themselves. So they can inflate themselves to, to shake off some of the, the sediment, but not all of them are good at that. And um, eventually that can lead to them being smothered by the sediments. Um, the sediments will cover them, block the sun, block their, um, block their, respiration corals don't breathe but they exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen mainly cell to cell in their gastrovascular cavity and their external epidermis so they need that really nice clean water so that they can function physiologically Okay, a few more. Um, the nutrients in the water, corals don't like super soupy water and high nutrient levels thicken the water mostly due to algae and nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen. If you remember your chinops, those are important nutrients. All body tissues use uh, phosphorus and nitrogen um, for metabolic processes and structures. However, if there's too many, that can cause um, algae to grow and cover the corals. Uh, it also can bl block out sunlight in the water. Um, and uh, again, that can cause some problems. 
Here's a question for you. If you don't know, you can pause this video and go out to your parents' garage and see if they have any fertilizer for the lawn. Tell me what is in that fertilizer. I'll give you a minute. Do you guys know what's in fertilizer? Fertilizer that we put on our plants for agriculture and for our lawn is made of nitrogen and phosphorus. And when it rains, all the fertilizer that's been put onto um, the land uh, that runs into the nearest body of water, like a creek or a river, that eventually runs to the ocean. So when we have a coral reef that's near the mouth of a river running from the land, very often those reefs, reefs are in... Why do I keep saying reefs? I want to pluralize that wrong. Reefs at the mouths of rivers near land will sometimes experience uh, some setbacks, some struggles just due to the high nutrient content in the water and the having to battle algae. Okay? Um, we get what's called nitrate spikes and they get all, they puff up. They don't like that. It's, they're not good. Okay, uh, corals are picky about their pH, really picky about their pH. They want uh, more buffered, basic, water. Uh, they have uh, about a, an upper tolerance of 8.3, lower tolerance of 8.0, and that that's about the average of the ocean. Um, corals don't grow in acidic conditions because uh, they make their, their skeletons from calcium carbonate, and calcium is dissolved in acid. Okay? Uh, if we come back to the class, we'll do an experiment on that, and I'll show you guys how that works. The substrate, and again, remember that for future reference. Substrate. These guys, like most corals, like to be attached to a hard surface with their little foot, and I'll talk about that next time. Um, so these guys are sessile. Most corals are sessile. They don't, they don't move as an adult. They are plankton, and they swim around when they are larvae, and then they settle out. They attach to a substrate that is usually a rock or a dead coral, old limestone, and then they start to grow and divide themselves. Um, so they, they like, they don't generally form on sand. There are a few corals that, um, that will grow on a sandy bottom um, as, as an individual. Okay, we'll go through those. Now remember, everything that I talk about when it comes to ecosystems and animal groups are general statements. There are always weirdos. There are always exceptions. And um, corals, uh, corals are the same, right? There, there's going to be some that like it a little more acidic or like it a little more basic. There are some that like nitrate spikes um, that will settle in the sand instead of on a rock. But again, remember, these are the general parameters of the abiotic environment for a coral reef. Okay? Oh my gosh, that's all. That's all. Okay, so your assignment for today is on canvas make sure that you um, got all of this information i'm not going to make you upload your notes uh, for this presentation you're welcome but what you need to do is go read the what is a coral reef article you're going to summarize each numbered section and then also you're going to watch that video that i mentioned before and there's some questions on that worksheet for that video as well okay okay and then when you're done, go go do some more dives. That Google Earth is pretty awesome. And if you have Google Expedition app on your phone or your iPad, you can also do more dives on there and it's even more interactive, okay? All right, have a great week. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.